This footage was actually going to be used in my lathe series of videos. In my video number 20 for the G0602, I discuss how my machine was cutting above the center line, and my solution to overcome that was to take a hundred thousandths off the bottom of this uh, tool. And I actually show you a clip of this footage in that video, but what I don't show you is this was actually a huge mistake on my part. Um, not the overall process, because it's worked fantastically, but um, while I was machining, I uh, neglected to pay attention to what I was doing, and I kind of, I, I nearly ruined the tool. I was able to save it, luckily, but I'll show you what happened. Basically, I was trying to take a 10,000th depth of cut, and I was shocked right away at how hard the steel was with the sparks and, uh, you know, super, super hot black chips coming off of it. Um, and I was impressed that my uh, face mill was able to start working right through the material at a 10,000th depth of cut. I started to become concerned when about halfway through, I noticed I was really turning the hand wheel slowly. I was barely advancing through this cut, and I couldn't figure it out. At first, I thought, well, maybe my inserts are already dying, you know, they're cheap Chinese uh, Shars brand inserts or sold through Shars. So I thought maybe the inserts are toast, and that's why I'm not able to cut along. But as what it was actually happening was the mill head was allowing the uh, the head to drop lower and lower. And what started out as a 10,000th depth of cut ended up being close to a 100,000th depth of cut. And you're going to be able to see that gouge here in just a second. I, I couldn't figure it out. And I just kept, you know, machining along like, oh, I wonder why this isn't working. And didn't, you know, until it was way too late, I finally stopped and realized what I'd done. There's actually two locks on each axis, and the point of it is to keep it is to keep that axis from moving around while you're machining in some other axis. Since I'm machining in the X, the Y and Z should really be locked, except for you know unlock the Z to change the depth of cut. But I didn't know that this was actually the first thing that I had machined uh, with a purpose. Everything else that I had machined up to this point was just making chips for the sake of curiosity, and it's uh, I guess ironic maybe or just sad that the first time I actually tried to do something I screwed it up by not locking that z-axis down. I would imagine on a bigger heavier mill this probably wouldn't have been a problem but there is some vibration in this cut and I think that's probably what allowed the the z to lower itself. I was able to save it though I went back up to taking ten thousandths passes and luckily the gouge was no deeper than a hundred thousandths and that was my goal was to take a hundred thousandths off so it actually worked out in the end but I'd also like to say that uh as a credit to this face mill, um, this is a uh, Shars 45 degree three insert face mill. It's a two inch wide one and uh, it handled this uh, abuse like a champ. The inserts actually ended up not being damaged at all. When you buy this uh, mill or if you look at this mill on Shars website, they list it as not coming with inserts, but it actually did and the three inserts were already installed. But I bought an extra six, uh, so I've got plenty of inserts. And the nice thing about these square inserts is you get four corners to cut with. So you can rotate to a new corner every time you, you know, smoke an insert. I was shocked to find out that the that doing uh, this didn't destroy my inserts, but I've been using the machine like crazy ever since, uh, or the tool, I guess, and I've still been getting great results. I can face two full inches of aluminum, and I get a fantastically smooth finish. I haven't really done two inches of steel yet. I don't have a chunk of anything that big. No, that's not true. I do. I guess I just haven't thought about doing it. I should do that, and maybe I'll make a video if you guys... Uh, if I get any comments saying people would like to see that in action, but I'll put a link to the uh, to this face mill in the description for anybody who wants to check it out. The one regret that I do have is that it's an R8 um, arbor for the R8 spindle, which obviously works. But down the road, I plan on going with the Tormach style of tooling, and I kind of wish that I'd bought a face mill uh, that didn't have an arbor or at least had a removable one so I could swap it out or make one so I could eventually use this face mill in the Tormach style tooling, but... I don't think that's ever going to happen. I guess I could try to chuck it up in my lathe and machine a three-quarter inch uh, arbor, but I, I don't think I have the balls for that. I guess maybe I could outsource it. I don't know. I, it seems awfully risky to me. Uh, anyway, that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you, so uh, don't forget to leave your comments uh, in the description or uh, in the comments section below. Um, be gentle, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you in the next video.